but this year's probably been a, uh, the least amount of shock I've had coming back to Kenya. And that's basically because I'm experiencing double digit temperatures right now. Uh, last year when I came back to Kenya, uh, yeah, so February of 2015 was one of the coldest months ever. And uh, yeah, it was a huge shock. Um, we were on, you know, we're in the, in the tread, on the treadmill two or three times a week. And now it's say I'm running short, so. In Guelph, we have a lot of good trails. Uh, it's a city of 120,000. So we have a, kind of a city core and around that a lot of green space with uh, dirt roads and, and trails. And there's a, you know, a few trails that run right through the middle so you can connect everything and then you know, really get outside of the city pretty quickly and get some peace and quiet, which is really nice. And they're crushed gravel, so they're, they're, nice, uh, they're nice for off-day running. And uh, no matter where you are, seemingly in the city, you can connect up with other people, meet for long runs. Whoa, 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 it's not really the same sort of training for you know the roads or track, but um, yeah, the most part I think we we hit most of the, we hit most of the trails in the city. Kenya this year was really uh, was really good for me. Um, I started off injured, which has been different in the last few years, but similar to my first year in Kenya and going there i usually take about five days easy just to get used to the altitude and i didn't really have a choice this year coming off this injury and luckily enough i saw a physio early on there and kind of diagnosed my problem and uh kind of came with some exercises to to get over this injury and then from then on training just really ramped up quickly because of the altitude and the soft surface um you know i was able to not go too intense and still get uh, some benefits just running easily. Um, my last three weeks in Kenya went really well um, and I felt like I put myself in a good position to be able to do well at the upcoming World Half Marathon Championships in Cardiff. Um, in previous years I have um, trained right up until the race so this is a bit different. I came back to Guelph for my last two and a half weeks to do some sea level training and really hit that half marathon pace which is really tough to do at altitude especially you know in, in E10 which either you're dealing with hills or even a dirt track which is you know a little bit slower than uh, even you know, uh, you know a rubber track at 7,000 feet or something like that this is 8,000 feet and, and a bit slower but I feel like I'm in a good really good spot um, to get going for Cardiff. Yeah, this year in Kenya, obviously there's a bit more focus, a bit more chatter, I guess, about the recent doping cases that have been going on. So there's been something like 40 uh, Kenyans who have tested positive in the last couple of years. And the IAAF is looking into how they're getting tested in Kenya. And it's just not up to the same standards as we're used to. And I actually got tested when I was in Kenya and I was notified the night before at 8 p.m. to come into El Duret the next day, which is about 30 kilometers away. So, which is way different than what I'm used to here in Canada. In Canada, it's, you know, a knock on your door at 6 a.m. and you don't know it, you know, yeah, it's a complete surprise, whereas this was, you get some notification. So, <clears throat> uh, you know, one of the reasons why they have that in Kenya is because a blood test needs to get tested within 36 hours and they don't have an accredited lab in Kenya, so it's either gotta to go to South Africa or to Germany. And so logistically it's a bit of a problem, but it still should be much better than it is. And that's kind of why WADA and IWF are doing an investigation. And, you know, people are speculating that Kenya might be the next country to, you know, have a, you know, take a, take a time out, you know, yeah. From, from competition. So yeah, there's a lot of people talking about that, which is, which is kind of too bad because it takes away from 
you know, the majority of athletes there who are training really hard and competing clean and stuff like that. But it's definitely not, was an underlying theme through, throughout uh, this, this past uh, training camp in Kenya. One of the big things to me is the training partners. So in Canada, if I'm doing something, you know, like a 30K run with a lot of, you know, tempo, it's really just Eric and I, you know, pushing each other. And, you know, we're, we're at the same level. So it's, you know, we're both kind of helping each other out. Whereas in Kenya, I can do a similar run and be training with guys who have run, you know, three, four minutes faster than me in the marathon. So I, I'm, you know, I'm hanging on for dear life uh, you know, and it, it, the dynamics a bit different, so I get to test myself a bit different than I do um, here in Guelph, where at sea level everything's a bit more controlled, and I kind of know what what I'm going to feel like at certain paces. So, you know, I, I as much as I train hard and push myself, I, st I I can still stay within that you know that safe zone. Where is in Kenya with the altitude, the hills, and the really good training partners, I often bite off a bit too much you know, more than I can chew, and then uh, I get into trouble and I struggle, and it, you know, it's not really fun, but it's, it's, it's really interesting to just put yourself in that position and, and, and kind of get that different stimulus. Um, the other good cool thing about Kenya is uh, just like the culture and just experiencing a whole different lifestyle. Um, it's really neat to live simply and not have all the distractions and stuff, so you know, you just, you just waking up and, and eating and, and running and taking naps and it's, it almost doesn't really feel like real life mm -hmm. at all. I started you know, thinking of like what training I just recently did and what, how that transitioned to the training I'm going to do now and mm -hmm. yeah, um, you, know, you know, you meet a lot of new people. There's about 70 foreign athletes that stay at the camp where I stay. so. You, you know, often you cross over, you know, two to four or five weeks or whatever with other athletes from all over the world. So it's, it's pretty cool to see how they're training, what, you know, what it's like, what running is like in their country, like what the running culture is. And um, yeah, so there's, there's a whole a lot of different things that just, they're, they're way different than the normal routine that mm -hmm. I'm here. And yeah, I mean, a, a, a six week trip in Kenya, yeah, it definitely flies by. Mm -hmm. And if you're there in January, February, it's like every day is the same. It's as far as weather. It's mm -hmm. like I think it rained twice the whole time mm -hmm. I was there. So it's just you know, here, you know, in Ontario, the, the weather's always changing. So you can kind of think back of oh yeah, we had the snowstorm last week, or it was sunny and warm this week and whatnot. In Kenya, it's just like the same day over mm -hmm. and over again. So it's the, just the days and time just kind of blend together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to train in Guelph pretty much from here up until Rio, so 